Gather round, heroes, and join me for an in-depth look into the secrets of Demio. In this series, we completely spoil the climax of each book, the boss battles, by neutralizing their superpowers and exploiting their weaknesses. In the town of Sunderhaven, undergrounders have observed a giant rat called the Rat King, which is believed to reside somewhere in the sewers. Finding the Rat King is hard, if you're unlucky. There are a few good-sized maps he could be hiding in. He could be waiting in the last room for you to open the door, or he could be just around the corner. He can spawn anywhere in the fog of war, even half a dozen spaces away. I've even found him on the first turn. Remember that key holders, including bosses, spawn first, and they move first. So if you see something summoned right when the monster move starts, that's likely the Rat King digging a rat nest. He does need to be aware of you before he does anything, though. Your opening strategy is going to be shaped by how much time you have and what cards you have. With lots of time and artillery, you can build a strong base to defend and retreat to when things get overwhelming. In many situations, you can force him to come to you. If you have Reveal Path, use it to reveal the Rat King. He will start moving directly to your position. You should be able to estimate how long you have left, and even position yourself so he ends his movement close to you, but not close enough to attack. A good killing box is an empty corridor, around 10 spaces long, with all of your pieces crammed into one end. The artillery will warn you of his approach, and will still shoot him after he hits and runs, since he moves 6 when berserk, and the guns shoot up to 10. Ballistas work here, but the Guardian really pulls this off with Healing Ward and the Behemoth. The more the better. If there are side passages he can escape into, this won't work. So try to plug those with lamps or even heroes. You'll need to clear everything out of the corridor, and then start into adjacent rooms. Destroy it all, use your extra cards of mass destruction before you find the Rat King to avoid healing him. The Warlock has Feral Charge to handle the Pest Rocket, and Consuming Vortex can be quite good against a mob of a half dozen dead rats. I don't often use Astral Strike here, preferring just to attack plus Kana for three kills. The Guardian has several smaller area of effect attacks. The Hunter only has Hail of Arrows, but it can be used at quite long range. The Bard Shattering Voice, Piercing Throw, and Hurricane Anthem gives him a lot of tools against the mobs. The Sorcerer uses Freeze, Lightning Bolt, and especially Vortex to really mess up that mess of monsters. This could also be a good time to try overcharging twice. The Assassin tosses Poison Bombs into far-flung corners of the map, or uses it in lethal combination with Booby Trap. The Barbarian is spoiled for choice. Launch Lamp gets some good coverage, but the Leviathan works just as well on Vermin and lasts for several rounds to draw a line in the sand while potentially creating a field of Varga to harvest. And anyone can get a Scroll of Tsunami or Lightning or Heaven's Fury, which can be good here. When he shows up, inviting the Rat King down a long corridor is liable to get a Rat Bomb or two thrown your way. Destroy any rats he summons, and make him come to you. Without a base, advance cautiously, securing each room as you go. Eventually, the Rat King will see you and move in. Moving swiftly will get you stuck or surrounded and sap your resources. Gas lamps and spore funguses abound in the sewers and can help greatly eliminating enemies while earning mana. The Rat King is immune to poison, but burning a large gas cloud and any number of other area of effect attacks might damage him. You'll hear him scream, which sounds like a cave troll, but you'll be sure it's him the next time a rat dies and his soul goes to heal its king. You're probably going to be swimming in poison, even without trying. This makes it a poor environment for the beast army, though elementals are okay. Once the green vapors have cleared, most of the monsters will be too, and you can move on. Reaching the Rat King to deal damage is also hard, for three reasons. The darkness, the mess, and his speed. Ensure you have a lit torch in a good position, like on your upfront fighter. Fighting in the dark introduces too many unknowns, and it's extra hard on melee attackers who can't see their target. 
Detect enemies and Guiding Light can be decent substitutes, but the first has three hit points, and the second lasts only five turns and then Guide has a tendency to wander off. Seeing the mess doesn't help you navigate it. Sometimes the floor is so thick with monsters, eggs, and rat's nests, it's difficult to move. The Rat King will even generate more monsters with Dig Rat Nest and Rat Bomb, which will produce four or five enemies, usually one scab rat and the rest normal rats, but it varies. There goes your last champion. Luckily, every class can deal with this, either with ranged attacks or attacks that As bring them engage, directly to the Rat King. Just your face. Once you engage, you'll want to ignore the rats and rat nests and focus on the boss. If you find it's too packed to reach him, drop back to a place where there's enough space to fight. Get eight spaces away from him, and he will likely walk right up to you. If you need to kill some rats to make room for your attack, do it. Remember the trade-off, though. A piercing throw through three rats doing five damage isn't going to help you. Once he makes an appearance, it's usually just for a quick bite, and then he's off. You don't want to be chasing him across the board. Don't play his game. He will divide and conquer you. Eliminate his mobility advantage in one of two ways. Conventional wisdom is to trap the Rat King so he can still hit but not run. You'll need sturdy items with 15 hit points ideally to block him in or block the exit. Barricade only absorbs one of his juicy berserk hits, so he could still escape, but Torch can absorb both of them and takes zero AP to put down. Lure is also good and lets you know exactly what he will be attacking. Heroes are certainly an option here, and when they are downed, their bodies are still effective non-target barriers for three turns. Non-targets are fine for corralling him, but keep in mind, he will attack something unless he is surrounded by four non-targets. There are many options, all with some kind of trade-off. Magic Barrier is fine, and is best for blocking larger exits. Lure is special. A lure placed in line of sight turns everything else into a non-target. The second way to hobble him is with Web Bomb. He's the only boss that isn't immune to the Tangled status. Even his Berserk movement drops from 6 to 1 for 2 turns. His own rats can keep him from moving at all. You can avoid taking damage from the Rat King by keeping your distance, so this is good for the Hunter and Sorcerer. Or if you hit him with the edge of the web, you can still melee attack and then withdraw. The Assassin can attack in stealth. Tangled State will hit him, but it only affects players for one turn, and even that ends when your turn ends. While all this is going on, monsters are still likely pressing in around you. One particular is unique to Book 2. Who's that Pokemon? The Gorgon, which hits like a souped-up ice element. A lot of cards that are useless against the Rat King can be used here. Astral Barrier deflects petrification back onto the Gorgon itself. Unfortunately, this makes it invulnerable for two turns while it's stoned, and it acts immediately when it recovers. So you really have to leave the area, otherwise it's just getting you two turns later. Scroll of Charm hijacks its petrification for your own ends and gives you time to kill it. Hymn of Obstruction stops it from petrifying, and Song of Recovery reverses the effects. My lute will heal you. Our world began changing. Actually, killing the Rat King is moderately difficult. Attacks with no AoE are best to reduce collateral damage to objects being used to trap the Rat King and rats which end up healing him. Mass destruction spells like those used by the Sorcerer and pretty much any summons are actually a disadvantage here. Always think about the trade-off. The Warlock with a Fortitude 3 Astacat uses Master's Call at a safe distance, though Kana might have trouble reaching the Rat King if it's a ways off. Avoid Astral Strike altogether, unless you're sure no rats will be hit. Up. 
The Bard supports effectively with Courage Shanty, as the whole party can stay together for this fight. The Guardian can carefully use Piercing Throw, and the Hunter has Poison Tip. The Assassin's Blink delivers Surgical Strikes and pursues a fleeing Rat King, so it's pretty good. The Sorcerer can't be afraid to use Fireball, and at least the second one won't hit any rats. Combining it with a small poison cloud is fine, and it still delivers that double damage. My staff, you the Barrier of Fury isn't easy to get off. You need enough free space to put down those magic walls, and even then you're only stripping 60% of its hit points, which can result in an awkward pause when you wait for the walls to come back down. The Barbarian has little difficulty finding Varga donors or delivering a rage-filled blow. It's more difficult to one-shot the Rat King, with 50% more hit points than the Elven Queen, but it's still possible. Finally, Hunter's Mark effectively reduces him to half hit points. One card, no action points. If you have two, mark him quickly, just to keep an eye on him. Even if he's in the dark and you're not 100% sure which space he's in, give it a shot. Then, I'll when you're ready to start wailing on him, apply the second mark. Firstly, what about the R.O.U.S.'s? Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. <laughs> the Rat King's superpowers are his damage and his healing. Let's see. He delivers the highest melee attack damage per attack in the game, 11 points, or 12 plus 12 when berserk. You'd be forgiven for forgetting that he also poisons you. Don't even worry about healing, unless there are other monsters chewing on you. He can kill you with 10 hit points just as easily as with 3 hit points, so use those potions to revive yourself and others. Unless you're using the web bomb strategy, you'll need to come to terms with the fact that something is going to be eaten. If you're penning him in with 4 adamant potions, you're golden, as you are with a lure. Otherwise, you're fighting a battle of attrition. How many torches do you have? Torches are great, they take two hits to destroy, and no AP to drop. You don't want to put down anything that he can destroy in one hit, like a barricade or healing ward, because he can hit that and then escape. A hero is fine, since a downed hero still blocks the way. Pick up any downed characters. Monsters attack the nearest hero with the lowest hit points, so the Rat King will likely continue attacking the same target. If you've only got one precious adamant potion, that poor bugger is a good recipient. Beyond that, there are some cards that will help you out. The Guardian's Armor and the Bard's Song of Resilience are alright. They can certainly save someone from death, but only from one attack. Curse Dagger halves the Berserk damage for one turn, and Magic Shield for one hero, friendly or in placement. 6 plus 6 damage is still lethal, but easier to manage. Howl of the Ancient does the same thing as Cursed Dagger for two turns. That's a lot of damage somebody's not eating. And did I mention the lure? Lure locking the Rat King is a cheap victory, but a win's a win, am I right? It's worth noting that the Rat King's special ability, Vermin Frenzy, supersedes the effect of the lure. So just because you have a lure down, doesn't mean that some rats aren't going to come and chew on you. Adamant Potion is King of Survival. One potion could be all that's needed to keep the whole party safe from this boss. Overall, Kleepdo has all of the tools that a hero needs to become a pro rat catcher for the right price. The Hunter once again hits the special tier. The Assassin and Barbarian are also exceptional at this work, and the Sorcerer has some effective abilities. Uh, let's get Submitted for your approval, the case of the Sovereign in Absentia. We join our unwitting heroes 45 minutes after starting the level. The whole party is hoarding torches, even though these would have revealed our prey and made fighting, oh, anything so much easier. We had found no sign of the Rat King, 
The door to his lair had been opened a full three minutes already, but this is his first glimpse of humans in his domain. Now, what will the fiends do? From the shadows he strikes, leaving the guardian with one hit point. But as I'm always telling my partner, you only need one. We've burned through a lot of resources, but we've also gained a lot of class cards through poison kills, so we're good to go. The hunter marks him and gets to work. Find the time. Ready. A torch. He's well trapped, so no need to hang on to the torches. Plus, Urak wants to see what he's training so he can get the most Varga. We're helping out Awana here by removing any targets that would reduce the effectiveness of an astral strike. I am here. <laughs> yeah. For the queen. My armor has been repaired. I'm aching to start an astral strike to clear up. There aren't any wild cards to consider here, like friendlies, so 45 hit points is the mark we're going for. We're sure this won't drive him berserk. Then she moves in and puts Kana into a position to take the hit. Things are heating up outside. We're going to ignore that. Sigrun's got our back. My arrow was ready. And now Urak can finally use the Varga he's been holding on to and finishes off the royal rodent. Freeing the crystal key from his grasp. And that's the end of one of the more difficult boss battles. What you have just looked at takes place 300 feet underground. Thanks for checking out another masterclass. If you find this stuff informative, please tap the like button so others can find this content. This has been MyY. I'll see you in Hellmar.